Point number six now, question 11. What happened to the beast after the 42 months? Now remember, we identified this, uh, this time that he would rule for 1260 years, and it started at 538 AD. And so what happens out to the beast after 42 months? Let's see. Revelation 13 and verse 3 says, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Now death is a terminal thing, isn't it? It's an ending. It's, it's ending the rule of the beast. That's a, an ending point, right? And his deadly wound was healed. Now after the death blow was given, uh, something happens later, apparently, that heals the wound. But so... Um, but if you, if you add 1260 years to our starting date, which was 538 AD, uh, who knows what year that would come to? Very good. 1798. In fact, you can look in, in the Encyclopedia of uh, Americana and for the 1941 edition. You don't have to look there. You can look right online on the Wikipedia Encyclopedia. Same exact words. I just looked it up just a few hours ago before I came here. Uh, Right on the Wikipedia Encyclopedia, or Encyclopedia Americana, it says this about uh, Berthier, Napoleon's general. It says, Napoleon's general, Berthier, it's uh, Antoine, or Antoine, I think it's Antoine Berthier, made his entrance into Rome, abolished the papal government, and established a secular one. And he took the Pope captive, took him back to France, put him in jail, where he died later. That was the deadly wound and the, that he took away all the power that the Pope had, most of the power, and the Pope died there. And the, and the church languished for, for some time. Now, before this, though, it was the, it was the power. It was the world power. It ruled the world, basically, and, and everybody was, you know, who didn't agree were heretics. They would be mass uh, executions and that and sort, of, sort of thing. But let's go, was, the, was this wound healed? Well, yes, some years later, you can see right there in your lesson, uh, there's an actual excerpt from uh, a newspaper, the San Francisco Chronicle, from 1929. Uh, 1929, Mussolini, now have you heard that word before, that name? Mussolini, how do you like that? That's from World War II, isn't it? That was one of our enemies, right? That's one of the Hitler's allies. About, that's the bad guy. This is before he was allied with Hitler, apparently. But in 1929, Mussolini and Cardinal Gasperi signed a treaty called the Lateran Treaty, and that which established the Vatican City as the sovereign state that we were just talking about. Uh, they signed a treaty, they, they made the Vatican City, they gave them 109 acres there and said this is a sovereign state, and they signed a treaty, and they, uh, they put this pope in charge there and said now you are, have your own nation, and this ought to hold you for a while, this, this will set you up here. You got some, some power, you got your own nation, uh, and so now the Vatican City became an independent nation. Of course, we know who runs the Vatican City. That's the Roman Catholic Church. That's the papacy who runs that. And they're right in your... Um, you see the article. Do you, do you have a picture of the article? A little photo, uh, sort of a, a little JPEG picture in there. San Francisco Chronicle, February 11, 1929. It says, in affixing autographs to the memorable document, that Lateran Treaty, healing the, healing the wound. Yeah. And that's right out of Bible prophecy, isn't it? This is amazing. Uh, this is like they're not trying to hide it even. Healing the wound. In fact, if you, look, if you put in the words healing the wound in the internet, do a little Google search, it'll pop up everything and you see Pope this, Pope, 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 Pope. It all refers to that. They, everybody knows it. Healing the wound. But they've forgotten it, haven't they? Right now everybody's forgotten it, right? And those quotes that we gave you about the reformers identifying the Pope as Antichrist, everybody's forgot that. There's not hardly a Christian uh, denomination besides a few uh, like what we're doing, we're teaching it all the time. This is part of our message. But most Christians, who, they forgot how their, where their roots were. They forgot how they started. I talked to a, a Pentecostal lady not long ago, and I said, you realize your church, your very church, your reformers and your founders all identified the Pope, the papacy, as the Antichrist. And she was like, no, that can't be. I'll have to look into that. Well, I, you know, you can look, yeah, look into it. I, that's what we are encouraging people to do. Look into it. So this deadly wound uh, was established in 1798. That's exactly 1,200 and, you got it, 1,260 years. Just like the Bible says, 42 months. He's going to rule for 42 months. And right, yep, right to the year, uh, a deadly wound was, was, was dealt. And then, 1929, uh, some 130 years later, uh, he was resurrected. And this Lateran Treaty was signed. And Vatican City was established. The Pope reinstated. Deadly wound healed, just like prophecy. 
Very clear. Which brings us to point seven and question twelve. What does the beast do to the saints? Revelation 13, 7 says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now that's not a good thing for a church to do, just to war with saints, is it? That's a no-no. Saints are supposed to be God's people. But uh, it says here, the Bible says, This beast who demands worship, and all the world wonders after him, and uh, he, he's going to make war with God's saints and overcome them. In other words, he's going to have power over them. And you know, you probably read it's in lots of history books. In order to silence heretics, how many, a few hundred people were slain, weren't they? Come on now. Not a few hundred, a few thousand? A few what? Million. That's right. If you've read books like Fox's Book of Martyrs, they estimate up some 50 to 70 million heretics were martyred. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. Waldens, these great commandment-keeping group of people who were persecuted by the church for their faith. Uh-uh. They were persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church. Wow. They lived in what is now Southwestern So they'd be among that 50 to 70 million estimated martyrs. That's a lot of people dying for their faith. During these, what we call the Dark Ages, you can see why they're called the Dark Ages, because, you know, they, the Bibles were taken out of the hands of the common people, uh, and that's where the, rest, the Protestant Reformation sort of came around, because they started printing Bibles again. John 16 and verse 2, Jesus said this, this is not in your lesson, he says, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. So, it may be that people like, uh, you remember Paul, for instance, Paul was, is the author of most of the New Testament. He used to persecute Christians, didn't he? He used to persecute the saints, thinking he was doing the right thing, right? He thought he was doing what was right. The Bible says that in the last day, the same thing. Jesus says, there's going to be times when you're going to be persecuted and people will actually think they're doing God's service. Yeah, he says the time is coming. He says it's future. And I'm, I'm almost positive he's talking about the last days. But he was also talking about their time too, wasn't he? Because all the disciples, except for John, I guess, were martyred for their faith. So they've, you know, it's been happening. And, by, and Paul says, all that would live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Just, just, if you're going to live close to God, you just, just count on it. Put it down in your calendar. You're going to suffer persecution. And so, anyway, let's go on to question 13. Whoa, five minutes. And point eight, does this beast symbol have a single man at its head? Which is going to be point eight. Revelation 13, 18, it says, count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. There's the answer to that question. Does the Roman Catholic Church have a man, a single man at its head? Fits that, that perfectly, doesn't it? In fact, the, in Lucius Ferraris, Prompta Bibli Bibliotheca, uh, the, uh, this is a quote from their church, an official quote. The Pope, it says, is of so great authority and power that he can modify divine law, since his power is not of man, but of God. In other words, they said he has the power of God. He's God on earth. This is his, he's taken God's place here on earth. Point number nine in question 14. I think this is our last question. Okay, this is the one we've been really boiling it down to. Uh, what is the mysterious number 666? That's what you wanted to know, isn't it? Now, you don't need this point, do you, to identify the, the beast power, do you? How many of you are still going, scratching your head going, I don't know. Maybe this will help us. Do you think this will actually help us? Or is this extra credit information? What do you think? It's extra credit, isn't it? In fact, the Bible even words it that way in Revelation 13 and 18. I guess it's 18. It says, um, here is wisdom. I like the way the author begins that. Here is wisdom. In other words, here's something extra. You don't need this, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Here's a little extra wisdom, a little extra credit. Uh, it says, it is the number uh, of a man. And, the, and his number is six, six, uh, 600 and three score and six. So you're wondering, well, okay, well, back in those days when John wrote that, they had no clue what he's talking about, did they? There's no way they could have known. But if you look in our history, we can look back, and we all know, some of us know, that the popes used to wear what they called a triple-tiered mitre, or a three-layered crown. 